Ed Peters, Mark Helwig, Kay Wilson, Brian Bissonette. Here. Jason Weaver. I have no word from Jason. We have a quorum. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This meeting has been noticed to the public and news media as required by Section 19.84 of the Wisconsin Statutes. Um, none online, or there, I haven't received any requests here. Uh, comments would be limited to three minutes and directed to the committee as a whole, not individuals, and the committee cannot respond. Um, with no public comments on record, uh, consider approval of minutes from the previous meeting. I make a motion to approve minutes for 11024. Mm -mm. No. Second? Okay. I got the wrong thing. Oh, from two two seven twenty four. I'll second that. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Um, moving on, we have uh, register of deeds. Update. There's a uh, report. Summarizing. I don't, any questions or comments? It looks pretty typical for a report. Uh, moving on, uh, number eight, events, discussion, and possible action. Any events coming up? Uh, no applications this month. No applications. Uh, land records and county surveyor report. Uh, we have a report from the county surveyor's office. Uh, Two certified survey maps in February and working on corner identifying corners and maintenance of corners in several townships. Now, conditions may have been favorable for working in the swamps, but I think it's going to be getting softer pretty soon. So uh, property lister report. So basically what the rollover is, is, you know, we, yeah, it, it states it there, but you know, the parcels that we've created, um, you know, each, every year uh, tax bills are created based on what the property looked like on January 1st, but we need to process, you know, changes and updates throughout the year. So while we do that, those are applied to like a next year category. Once we roll over, um, that is when those change to current. Okay. Um, so that's what that refers to. Um, I've got a report um, in February. I went to the Wisconsin Land Information Association meeting. Uh, that's my industry meeting. Um, as as the land information officer, um, this is the corresponding state association. Um, I went to a land information officer network meeting and we learned about uh, what's happening at the state. 
Um, there was an, a bill, AB 915, that uh, was an effort to raise recording fees since our uh, grant funding comes from recording fees. Recording fees are down, so there's been an effort to raise that recording fee since there's less recordings. Uh, that that seems to not be going any further. Uh, the Realtor Association had their opinions on that, and it kind of stopped at that point. Um, we got an update on Wisconsin's um, upcoming Daniels Law. So if you're not aware, Daniels Law is a federal law that protects uh, federal judges and those around them. Um, protects their personal information, um, you know, to help them not be located. And um, states are coming through with their own laws uh, like this. So we're we're preparing for this to happen. Um, the bill establishes privacy protections for judicial officers. Uh, when we receive a request to remove our personal information, we will need to comply within five business days. And this will have to be scrubbed from our website, if you will. Um, whether we know the names there or not, you know, whether we know that information is out there or not. So in preparation for Daniel's Law, we, the county at large really needs to know kind of where they're kind of storing people's personal information so that they know where they need to go to scrub it. Um, scrub it, shield it, I guess. Shielding is the uh, technical term. Um you know, that affects land records office with our, um, you know, property record information that's open records. So we're going to, we'll have to work with our, you know, our software and, you know, come up with a solution. I think we get a year to sort this out after the bill is passed. Um, further, we talked about personal property. Um, personal property was eliminated in 2024. All of that all of that value uh, went to the real estate. Um, this doesn't cause a problem in most commercial cases, you know, where you've got a business that owns the property and they also have a tax, personal property tax bill. But we've got different things going on up here when regards to resorts or trailer parks. So we've got a lot of um, odd situations to deal with. Um, the county, not necessarily. The county knows about this, but this is um, this personal property elimination is really up to the property owner and the assessor. It's just that the property owner, you know, doesn't really know about it a whole lot, and but it's up to the assessor to really kind of sort out well, how they're planning on dealing with this in each township. Uh, we learned, we learned, uh, we were talked about it a bit and learned how to handle it in our parcel mapping because um, we'll have to. It's creating new parcels. Personal property wasn't you know, a parcel before. And now we've got a document that people can record that creates, you know, kind of a parcel for a trailer or, you know, whatever that previous personal property bill used to be. Um, I learned about some updates and changes to our ArcGIS online system. Uh, right now we have forestry survey and the highway department utilizing uh, some aspect, well, as well as health and human services, utilizing some aspect of our ArcGIS online system. Um, LIDAR, you know, we've, we, we, re, we got LIDAR in 2017 um, through a USGS program. That program has, you know, done what it needed to do. So there's, there's a going, they were talking about a new program from the USGS called 3D hydrography program that's focused on improving the US water surface data. So it's it's focused on, you know, stream locations and, you know, water, watery stuff. Um, so I learned about that. Um, aside from the WLIA conference this month, um, I also completed what was needed to update um, dispatch Spillman software. There's a um, whole server that hosts, um, you know, geographic information for their maps and uh, for their address system. Basically, you know, when you type in an address into the CAD system uh, to bring up a location, maybe not necessarily on a map, but like a record of a place, you know, that 
my my data well the gis data feeds into that as well so um sawyer county alone you know me and um alex uh updated everything that was needed to do that um you know basically independently spillman kind of set us out on our own for that but we figured it out yep so that was february any questions just i have a comment um back, back to what brian was talking about with the personal property tax that's affecting the county as well we're working through that we have it came up a little bit at the um, uh, airport session last week where we own the airport property but the hangars are all privately owned and so at this point our plan is to just let the assessors assess those pro it becomes part of the real estate tax the assessors are going to assess us and then we'll have to transfer you know essentially bill the airport tenants for their personal property tax portion same thing we have a couple tower sites on county property where the county has leased the land and then somebody owns the tower on top for those because there are already legal descriptions for those towers we'll be filing that um what, what's it called it's, there's a form that you fill out to file it's a bfi document buildings BFI. fixtures and improvements so then yeah so if we've got a the hinge point here being like if we have a description for it so if we have a description for the site we can you know, fill out a document, create a, a parcel for that site. Um, in the case of these towers and hangars, we've got that stuff pretty much surveyed. So, but I guess there's a the question that I might have is, what about the contents of of buildings, the property that um, that was part of that personal property tax? I know that some large or some companies that had equipment, for example, that was, was a, had an assessed value, for example, uh, construction equipment and so forth that they were storing on those pieces of property. Do we now not receive any uh, value or any benefit from that from as a county? Um, well, from what I understand, though, that um, those taxable items have just kind of been added to the real estate. Okay. So it's still up to the assessor to sort that all out. So that's going that's going to require those assessors to be able to have access to see what that equipment actually is. Yeah, I'm not I'm not familiar with the process really. Okay. Since we don't have any assessor at okay. the county. Townships hire the assessors, and yeah, I'm not necessarily sure what they get up to. In the past, the uh, the personal property was uh, self, um, um, no reported. Like we had to fill out a form. Mm -hmm. In our situation, we had boats and furniture and blah blah blah. Sure, had to put a value on it. So I don't know where it goes from there. From now on. Okay, thank you. That's a wrinkle for someone else to take care of later on, I guess. So, agreed. <laughs> oh yes, yes. I'm I'm just thinking of the number of pieces of equipment that I see parked at one particular location close by, and those all have value. Some of them don't look like they have very much value, but. I'm sure they all have value. Any other questions or comments? Okay, moving on. Uh, Sawyer County Forestry Department. I just wanted to uh, begin that discussion. I on uh, this last week, I received, I think it was on Monday, a uh, review and fiscal audit report from. Uh, the Department of Natural Resources, and um, I haven't received report cards personally as a, for a long time since my family has outgrown that, uh, but it looks like a very good report, uh, very uh, 
many commendations uh, and a couple of recommendations to go along with it, but uh, just wanted to uh, make sure said uh, pass on uh, good job to the uh, forestry department for the report that we got back. Thank you. Uh, recreational trails report, any? Good morning. Good morning. Um, not a lot to report. Our county forest and the federal forest trails closed down as of last Friday. Flambeau River State Forest had already been closed, so it's just a downtime. We Our clubs are planning some work days to get out there and reduce signage, brushing, whatever we can do during this period and make the trails better. Really don't have anything else to report unless you have questions. And that goes through May? We don't know when that's going to happen this year. It's It's been an unusual year. Um, <laughs> Well, I don't think it'll last that long, but then of course we have some fire danger hazards unless we get some rain here. So um, uh, that's, that question's probably better answered by our Mr. Peterson at this point. Yeah, I can answer now. Yeah, typically we have a set closure from April 1st to May 15th, but We've, we've always uh, left the ability to close early or late as conditions allow. So uh, this spring obviously was a very early closure. So um, if conditions continue the way they are, things dry out, we'll likely have a very, very early opening date on the trails as well. So, okay. Yeah. Kathy's okay. phone has been ringing off the hook because yeah. of the early closures. Yeah, I'm going to turn it off pretty soon. So <laughs> I'm about done. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Uh, item B, County Forestry Report. Okay, uh, for the month of February, we did have 18 sales uh, listed as active uh, in spite of the uh, early road bans this year. Uh, most of our contractors were able to uh, move to more suitable jobs with, with hauling potential. Um, we didn't have very much uh, wood stranded due to the, the quick breakup. Uh, the contractors did mobilize things when they had the ability to do so. So we're kind of in a wait and see mode at this point. Uh, but uh, sale revenue, revenue on file right now is just under 4 million uh, revenue for the month. We did just under 500,000, so our year to date is at 737,000. Um, so we're a little bit off the mark for a typical winter, but uh, considering the uh, conditions, it, it was, uh, we did pretty well. So uh, we'll see where things go coming into spring here. Um, sale inspections are on target, the level of activity. Uh, we did have one track turned in for review. Um, additionally, we are preparing our spring uh, timber sale bid prospectus right now. Uh, reviewing sales and putting together our packets. Uh, that'll be going out probably the first week of April. Um, recon acres, we're on target right now. Uh, we did start a new uh, federal good neighbor authority contract. Uh, it's for year 25. Um, it's approximately 600, acre, uh, 600 hours of sale establishment and admin on the Forest Service for just under $40,000. Uh, I did submit the reimbursement request for our year 24 contract from last year as well. Uh, we should be getting that reimbursement, I would think, within the month yet here. Uh, nothing else uh, new to report uh, for Oakwilt. Um, as far as trails, as Kathy mentioned, um, all of our rec trails are closed at this point right now. Um, we do have a, a rehab project that's on hold until road bans are lifted. Um, additionally, we are putting together our, our grant applications for the April 15th deadline for our motorized trail. So we've got a, a, a pretty good pile of those to submit for some uh, different projects. Uh, we're still uh, working through uh, the, the 
carbon credit verification process. Uh, Andy and I did have a, a, a Zoom meeting with the new reps uh, in the middle of the month to go over some of the, the process and where we sit on that. So it, it's kind of looking like the timeline is stretching out just a little bit more till we we see credits to the market, but we're, we're still working through all the verification process and uh, they'll do uh, their own audit here this spring, a field audit to verify the numbers. Also, uh, forestry staff did attend the County Forest Association annual spring meeting, and uh, we do every three years, we do a Madison meeting. Uh, so it was a pretty good meeting. Uh, we did have uh, one day with an open house listening session with uh, several legislators, uh, which was, uh, it's always a good experience for, for uh, forestry staff to get out of the woods and get into a formal environment like that and present to legislators and and, and hear some of the things that are going on in Madison. So it's a good learning experience uh, for everybody. So uh, other than that, that's about all I have to report. If you have any questions. Any questions? Thank you very much, Greg. Uh, DNR forestry report. Me. No, no DNR today. Okay. It's letter C to. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, pardon me for moving ahead there. Uh, recreational trail aid resolution. Yep. I believe we have that. Yep. Yep. This is our annual resolution that allows us to apply for the motorized recreational trail grants. So just an update. Make a motion to approve resolution for outdoor recreation aids. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the resolution for outdoor recreation aids for 2024. Any further discussion? Okay, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The um, resolution is approved. Um, please remember to uh, Sign it, we have it right here in front before you leave this morning. And that'll be passed on to the um, county board for finalization. Um, item number 11, uh, zoning and conservation department report. Yeah, for the month of uh, February into March here, we are still continuing the search for our agricultural representative to sit on the Land, Water, Forest Resource Committee. We did send out uh, paper publications, you know, looking for those that would be interested in sitting on the committee. Uh, still have not found any agricultural representatives to kind of step up on that. Um, we do have seven farmers signed up for the Nutrient Management Farmer Education Training, March 18th through the 20th. Uh, Tim will be kind of... Uh, co-hosting and running that program. So we'll be uh, trying to reach out to those seven farmers to see if, you, uh, if any of those want to serve as agriculture representatives as well. Uh, tree sale inventory is completely sold out. Orders can be picked up May 10th through the 11th. All dam inspections and operations and maintenance plans have been updated, uh, except for Deer Lake. Uh, Deer Lake never had one, so we're starting brand new on that one. Conservation staff over the next few weeks are doing some of the clearing and berming on the county owned dams. Conservation staff recently attended the Land Water Conference. That was uh, just last uh, Wednesday through Friday. Um, we'll have an additional conference report then in April for, for that. Uh, we also submitted for the Municipal Dam Grant. All that has been submitted before the deadline for the replacement dam on Fish Trap Lake. Uh, we're waiting to hear back then on the status of the approval, but um, we were able to get quite a few points as part of that grant system. So I, I do feel pretty confident that we'll will be accepted on that. So um, unless there's any other questions, that's my report. Any questions? Hey, thank you very much. Uh, well, no USDA NRCS report. Yep. Do you actually do oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes. Uh, uh, please state your name, please. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to start. My name is Nicholas Basasi. I'm the district conservationist that now covers uh, Sawyer County with the USDA NRCS. So 
A brief introduction and a bit of an apology. Uh, sorry for being MIA for the last year. NRCS has gone through a bit of uh, an internal shift here lately to what we call shared management. So uh, at the end of 22 and into 23, we've transitioned to where most district conservationists now cover multiple field offices. So previously, Sawyer County uh, was uh, handled out of the Spooner office under Ron Spearing. Uh, in 23, we transitioned. Now the um, uh, Sawyer County will be under the Ladysmith Field Office where the, actually the farm records are kept for all the farms in Sawyer County, which is what it was historically done as for the longest time. So at this time, I am the district conservationist for the Ladysmith and Medford Field Offices covering Russ, Sawyer, Taylor, and Price County. So despite all that transition and upheaval and we turned out, we turned over a lot of staff in those two offices in the last year. So across those two offices um, in the last 12 months, there's only two of us that are the same. So myself and then Jody Chopic, who uh, is the resource conservationist in Medford. So it's been quite the transition. But despite all of that, we remained very active in Sawyer County. So some fiscal year 23 numbers, which are coming a day late and a dollar short, but we did uh, nine EQIP projects. So that's the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. That's kind of our flagship program where we target known issues, resource concerns, and address them with a suite of practices. So we did nine unique projects totaling about well, not about $127,952 in obligation. Uh, just a quick synopsis, we've been working a lot with grazing and uh, we did a pit closure, a waste abandonment, which I worked with Tim from the county department on uh, earlier this year and then, or last year, and then a fair bit of forestry work. So the USDA does remain active, uh, helping with uh, timber marking and addressing invasive species issues that are kind of cropping up in the county. The other program that was very active in the county was the conservation stewardship program. That's where we enter into a five-year commitment with a landowner. And this is where you kind of graduate into. So we can address known issues, but we're also taking a landowner that has a pretty good stewardship level and increasing it. So we had four separate contracts in the county for that, varying from dairy farms to forestry type contracts. And we obligated $281,980 in that program in fiscal year 23. And then the last program is the RCPP, the Regional Conservation uh, Partnership. And um, we have a partnership that covers this, my whole administrative area with the American Bird Conservatory. And that program is meant to enhance young forest on the landscape. So we'll actually go in and shear aspen and alder specifically to benefit a uh, golden winged warbler habitat in the county. And we did four separate contracts totaling about $20,000 last year. So all those are in various states of being implemented. For fiscal year 24, I've received uh, 10 equip applications. So uh, varying from, again, cropland through forest type work. And we had over $100,000 in request to that. And we're still in the process of funding those. I have uh, also 10 applications to that stewardship program um, and a fair bit more interest on the cropland side this year. So there's going to be several dairy farms and uh, row crop farmers that we're going to be working with to harness what their operation is and see if we can't do different enhancements, either through cover cropping, nutrient management practices, potentially identifying areas on the farm that maybe shouldn't be cropped and putting that into you know, permanent cover things of that nature. And then we have an additional two of those early successional habitat for the American Bird Conservancy funded in the county at a little over 10,000 so far. Um, so that's kind of our update. I just wanted to let you know, we've still been very active in the county, even though I haven't been present and that's gonna be changing going forward. We will be submitting a report every month or being here in person. So um, lastly, I just kind of want to point out, um, my office is taking calls pretty much weekly, sometimes daily, on storm damage from the 20, December 2022 winter storm. And I'm sure the forestry guys know all about some of that. But uh, so we're working with only on the private lands to go in and see what we can do to reset some of those areas that have been heavily damaged, that we're not getting the growth regeneration. And NRCS has a suite of practices that we're applying from forest stand improvement 
to site preparation and woody residue treatment to address those. The thing that I'm running up against is contractor availability and getting folks to do that kind of work because there's going to be no monetary value or very little from cleaning up that those sites. We're really just trying to go in and hit the reset button to get regeneration back. And uh, it's kind of been a struggle and some of the equipment that's being used has been only marginally successful. So we're going to continue working on that. But after kind of the deer season this last year, and I think some landowners saw what happened, like really got on their properties and saw what happened from that storm. It's been constant. And I've been talking with uh, DNR Forester, I've been talking with some of the private land foresters and they're sending an awful lot of folks our way. So there'll be more updates on that. And then um, kind of the last person I want to introduce is uh, Jason Gunlock. He is also the uh, planner that works out of the uh, Lady Smith office and he does not cover Price and, and Taylor. He's just dedicated for um, Rusk and Sawyer County. So we're kind of bridging some staff that way as well. So we have some dedicated staff to work with in that regard. So any questions for me today? If there's no monetary gain for contractors, how do you plan or expect to get those areas cleaned up so that uh, we'll get, get the regrowth of the two? So oh. there is a monetary gain for the contractor, but not the landowner. So our cost share contract will be put in place to, uh, don't quote me on a number, but say we'll pay the landowner five to $700 an acre just to go in and clean that up. And that landowner then is going to pay that contractor just to do it. So if bringing a logger in just to clean up a site and not deliver any material, actually with our market right now, we've actually had some success with that. We've also tried going into some of these sites with like a FECON machine, so like a forestry mulcher, and just going in and setting it back. Again, the payment rates are the same. Those folks are really willing to do that but when you're in a damaged Aspen stand, if it's say less than 10 years, we can use that machine. But if it's like a 15 to 18 year old Aspen stand that got laid over and broke down, those machines aren't big enough to handle that. And we actually need traditional logging equipment to clean that up. And at that rate per acre, guy really needs to stay busy to want to to wanna do it for the rates we're offering. But at least there's a path forward and we're having some traction with landowners to go in and do that. So I was just on a site where we identified 23 acres that looked like a war zone from, from that snowstorm. And those trees were, that was an 18 year old uh, coppice regeneration on an Aspen stand. So it, it's too big for, too big for using the smaller skid steers with the FECON. So we're working with that landowner and he's going to find a logger to come in and, and clean that up. But our cost share rate is going to be about $500 an acre on that. So where there's a will, there's a way and the landowner really wants it done. So he's going to stand some money out of pocket, but 500 an acre is better than a, well, what it looks like right now. So, so we're working on some of that, but that's going to be a lot of our workload the next couple of years here. So. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you very much for your report. But can you get a copy of that? Yes, There's I can write this down and get it all and, and I need the spelling of your last name. Uh, we can do that as well. Uh, would you like that now? Or sure. I'll, Okay, so last name is B as in boy, E-S-A-S-I-E. -S -S thank you. So thank you guys. And again, apologies for this last year and some of the lack of our involvement with this committee, but that's going to be changing going forward. So thank you. Okay. Um, moving on to L LCO report. Anything from Brian? Hi, good morning, everyone. Um, well, a couple things. I don't know if Kathy's still there or not, but we've been working on on uh, ATV issues uh, together. Um, going back to the trails and in the early closures, um, one of the things that we unexpectedly have done where we've already started preparing for the upcoming um, fish, fish hatchery operations starting up, uh, which is weird because we're, we're gonna probably start up a good month earlier than we normally would. And so, 
Um, that's probably the biggest thing that we got going right now. We have all virtually all of our staff getting our our hatchery prepared. Um, <clears throat> so when the fish start spawning, we'll be there to get the biological um, stuff we need and uh, start operations. Okay, anything else, any, any questions for Brian? Okay, thank you very much, Brian. Um, moving on to item number 12, uh, release of reserved rights for flowage easements and gravel pits on parcel in the town of Winter, discussion and possible action. Um, so this is the same uh, topic as last month. There's a parcel in the town of Winter that has been for sale and um, we had approved it at last month's meeting, but then that sale uh, was canceled or fell through. So they have another sale pending. Um, what was in your agenda up till this morning was all the historical information regarding the quick claim deed and how the county um, transferred properties back in the 40s. Um, and again, I'll just repeat the <clears throat> information we received from Corp Council uh, that has dealt with these before is that the exceptions were standard back in the day when the county transferred uh, real estate tax and REMS or foreclosed properties through tax deed sales. Um, since that time or in recent times when uh, properties that still have that deed notice on them for the flowage rights and uh, gravel pit rights and road rights, uh, we've released those when requested uh, as we are, we just can't, the, the rights that were put on there in the 40s are no longer really uh, practical to exercise. Um, and even if we did want to, we'd have to do it with the landowners from, permission anyway. Um, so that's why we've been willing to release those. So the deed that came in uh, late last night actually quit claims um, those rights back to the property owner uh, and it's going back to the current owners, John and David Schmidt, and then um, that will give them clean title to be able to sell the property. So it's on hold right now? No, it's go well. Um, rather than the last last month, we were quick claiming it to the potential buyer. And rather than do that, they've asked for us to quick claim it back to the current owner. So when they do the title rec or uh, abstract update, it'll be clean when it goes to the next owner. So what action? You're approving the quick claim deed to remove the gravel pit and flowage rights um, from the current deed. And it's going to the existing owners now. So I would approve what Andy just said. You're, you're approving the quick claim deed that's part of the packet now. Okay. Appro I would make a motion to approve the quick claim deed. What is this? Do I have a second? Or a second. Second. <laughs> okay. Second by <laughs> Supervisor Bissonnet. Um any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. So is there anything? The little county board. Now. Oh, it goes to the county yep. board. Okay. There's nothing for us to uh, sign today or anything no. like that. Okay. Uh, item 13, tax deed foreclosure update. Yeah, I just want to give a kind of a quick update um, uh, for, for the treasurer. Um, she had uh, held off on proceeding with any sale of, of tax deed properties uh, because we were working through um, the outcomes or the effect of the LCO versus Evers uh, uh, appeals court decision from 2022. And that's for any lands within the tribal boundaries that had you know, gone from tribal ownership to private ownership and came back to being tribally owned. Um, we're coming back or in some places we're coming back and they were taxable. Um, the appeals court decision made those properties non-taxable. 
And so we had, uh, believed we had some properties within what we had taken in recent years that were by, owned by tribal members. So we have proceeded with returning one property to the owner. Um, and then the uh, uh, tribe has gone through and reviewed the list to make sure we don't have any other properties that are affected by that decision. So if we do find any, we're just going to return them to the uh, tribal, to the individual who owned the property. Um, so we don't go ahead and sell them and create any more problems. But I think we've got that all covered now. How bad does that hurt as far as taxes? Um, it hurts. You know, it doesn't really, it, it would have hurt, but the the towns and the, the county are getting some state assistance for um, at least a period of time that will go away to cover the, yeah, to offset the loss of tax revenue. But no action that we need to take. No um, future agenda items. Any, anything in particular coming up? Uh, correspondence reports from conferences and meetings. Don't have any other than what we've heard on reports during this meeting. Um, and if there are none, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>